Hello everyone, welcome back to Electronics Prepper, the channel where we try to learn as much as possible about electronics to become more self-reliant with technology and prepare for the future. Today um, I would like to show you something that's gonna take a little bit of time, so um, this video is going to be relatively long. Um, I'm gonna try to present to you all the things as fast as possible however there are quite a few things to um, you know to tell you uh, I will talk about the modification of a microwave oven transformer so that he better suits our needs whatever those may be um, I know that there are other videos on YouTube um, but not all of them give you all the necessary informations or uh, they, they, they don't always go through a step-by-step -step process to tell you, you know, all the smaller details, what happened, what didn't happen and um, all the challenges involved. So I thought it would be a good uh, idea for me to do this. On top of that, this video is also somewhat inspired by um, just a video that YouTube recommended me and I've watched him and I I personally go against this uh, method of uh, you know scraping microwave transformers don't get me wrong I have nothing against this particular guy or this particular YouTube channel you know everyone is free to do whatever they want but basically I came across this uh, video that shows us how uh, this guy is uh, in a very <laughs> brutal way um, trying to remove the windings that he thinks there are copper windings um, they're not really, but anyway, um, he's trying to remove the windings just to give them to scrap metal and make some money with them. Um, again, I've got nothing personal with this guy or this YouTube channel, but uh, I have everything against this idea and this this concept because a microwave oven transformer is a lot more useful if we use him as he is uh, as a transformer so as an electric device uh, rather than just uh, reducing him to just bare metal and trying to obtain some money for that metal um, a transformer costs a lot more than just the materials from which he is uh, created so uh, it makes a lot more sense and he's a lot more valuable if we would understand what we can use from him the, from the transformer and how we can modify him so that you know he um, starts to become useful for us because by default a microwave oven transformer is not really useful as he is he's giving uh, he has two secondary windings one which has a very small voltage on the output but a relatively high current which is uh, needed for the filament of the microwave uh, vacuum tube and a uh, very high voltage about 2000 volts uh, winding that's used to later to the anode well anyway things are a bit more complex than that but i'm simplifying them um the point is a microwave oven transformer as he is is not useful but uh, we can just uh, um, we can work a little bit uh, and without too much effort we can definitely transform him into something much much more useful and definitely a lot more useful than just the bare metal value of him okay so if you're interested in all the steps that i've done to um to modify one of my transformers keep in touch stay uh, stay uh, uh, pay attention to this video and you will learn quite a bit of things and if you happen to have such transformers or you will be um, you will be getting them in the future then um, yeah you, you will definitely um, enjoy what i have to present to you here before we move on as usual please allow me to thank the sponsor of this video which is pcb way a leading pcb manufacturer that can help you build your dream projects no matter how advanced they are they can create just the pcbs for you 
or help you as well solder components on them through PCB assembly services. If you're creating a full device, they can help you create a plastic case through either 3D printing or injection molding services or even CNC machining if you need custom metal pieces for a metallic case. You're free to use your favorite design software, upload the Gerber files and one of their professional representatives will contact you offering you one-on-one -on -one customer service. All you need to do is go to pcbway.com, the link is in the description. Thank you very much PCBWay for sponsoring this video. And now let's get started with uh, the things that I would like to show you. So um, I will uh, go step by step through all the steps that I have uh, that I needed to uh, do, and I will explain each of them why, um, what challenges we have had, uh, what you should do, and what you should not do. Okay, so um from the very beginning uh let me show you the three general steps um that you need to that we need to make so step one we need to um, basically open this transformer and remove the winding so for that we need to take a what's called an angle grinder and uh, just like i'm showing you now on the screen grind uh, just uh, the welds between the A and the E uh, core pieces, okay? So, um, let me show you it on an image. So, this is the transformer after I have um, um, removed the E pieces on the right from the A pieces on the left, okay? Um, so th these are called AE because, you know, in, th in this image, uh, things are clearer. On the left, we have uh, all those metal sheets that have the shape of the letter A, okay? And uh, right uh, on top of them um, will come all the uh, very uh, narrow metal pieces on the right, which um, uh, they tend to form a plaque if they are put one next to the other but if we take a look from the side they resemble the uh, E letter okay so uh, well in English you pronounce this uh, E and I but that's a bit weird okay so um, the E shape uh, is just a long uh, piece of metal okay uh, that comes on top of A and therefore uh, it closes the, um, the magnetic um, path. So, initially we will have, um, you know, a full um, uh, microwave oven transformer that has both of these uh, welded together. And if you take a look at the transformer, um, I don't have a good picture here but anyway if you uh, take a transformer and you take a look on the sides you will see four lines of um welds so the, the transform this transformer is welded in four different places but if you take a look carefully you will see that uh, two of these places weld together these two parts the a part and the e part on the other side, uh, the, the other welds are just holding together the A um, uh, sheet. And we don't need to polish those. We, we just need to, um, to polish the welds between the A and the E parts so that we can just remove the E and um, to uh, have access to the windings. Okay. So uh, this is what I'm showing you here. I have used an angle grinder. Um, uh, needless to say, you you need to fix the uh, you need to stabilize the transformer on a vise or something like that, and you need to grind you know the the welds until you are able to just remove the E parts on the right from the A parts with uh, the, the windings, which are now on the vise on the left, okay? So this would be step one overall. Um, then you need to remove the windings from the core. <clears throat> okay, I will go into greater details in a moment. I'm just uh, giving you a quick overlook, a quick overview of the entire process. So, 
um, we need to remove the windings because of course the secondary windings are useless and we need to create other windings in the in place so um in order to well act actually I'll, I'll come back with the uh, more details later and step three after we have removed the windings um we need to basically uh let me skip forward a bit we need to put back the primary winding and we need to uh, weld all the a core pieces together um because they need to be in a single block uh, they need to um, they need to be compact and they um, uh, we will need to weld everything uh, anyway but uh, it makes things a lot easier to work with if we weld the uh, air pieces uh, um, back together so that they don't slide out in and out um, randomly okay while we are working on the secondary windings and so on and so forth so this is the general overview and of course after we we uh, do this we need to weld we need to wind the secondary windings and um uh put back the lid which is formed by the e um, core and weld that again to um, the a uh, shaped uh, core um, uh, sheets okay so now let's take these uh, step by step and let's see you know what we um uh what we need to do and what are all the the details so before we um uh, of course the the first the absolute first step um uh, is this one with the polishing the welds so that we remove um the e core from the a core before this there's nothing because uh, we cannot do anything unless we remove the e core so that we have access to the the windings okay now um once we have access to the windings before we proceed to removing them it could be done later but it's it's better to do it now um so once we have just removed the e uh, shaped um, core and we have the a shaped core with the windings we uh, need to or it would be good if we would measure the surface of the inner core around which the windings are wound okay so to to draw what i'm talking about i'm strictly talking about the surface of uh this piece of metal okay because we have windings wound around this piece of metal we don't care about these on the outside okay we we care only about uh this on the inside let me draw it again okay so only this one um Take a metric uh, ruler, not an imperial ruler, because we need to measure the area in squared centimeters, not in inches or other stupid uh, measurement units. Um, measure the, the width and the length, uh, multiply that in centimeters, and you will get the area in squared centimeters. Um, this is important to know because the electrical power uh, technically speaking, the um, apparent power, which is typically denoted with the letter S, I use letter P here, from, um, it, which is typically used to, uh, for active power, but anyway, I use letter P just to, to make it clearer that this is the power that we're talking about. Um, there's this direct relation between the area of the core in square centimeters and the power in volt amps. So the area is the radical, right? The, the square root of the power in volt amps. Obviously, um, if we know the area, we can uh, in square centimeters we can um, square that value, and we will get the electrical power. So it's good to know because 
Um, from what I've seen, there are uh, smaller microwave oven transformers and there are also bigger microwave oven transformers. So they have different powers. We won't be able to use them at their full mathematically calculated power due to other reasons that I will show you in a moment. However, uh, it's still nice to know, at least in theory, you know, what's the maximum power that they were uh, designed to deliver. So um, now that, uh, you know, all the core is compressed, it's still compressed um, because they have the original... Um, um, the A-shaped cores still have the original uh, welds that uh, keep them uh, together. Um, it's good to do this measurement uh, and calculate the surface of this uh, core and uh, perhaps, I don't know, write it down on a piece of paper somewhere for later use, okay? And then um, we can, um, um, we can uh, go on with... Um, <coughs> Uh, with removing the windings from um, from the core. Now, in order to remove the windings from the core, as you can see here, I have created um, uh, a support made of wood. And I'm going to show you in a moment. Uh, he looks like this. Okay, so just three pieces of uh, wood from the usual... Um, wooden boards that uh, um, um, are used to create modern uh, furniture, you know, cut them uh, in the right size uh, for your transformers, uh, place them at a certain distance away from each other so that a transformer core can fit in the middle perfectly. Um, but at the same time, you know, make it so that the windings of your transformer will fall on these vertical wooden pieces. This is necessary because um, we need to then take a hammer and uh, we need to hit the core, okay, in order to remove to separate the core from the windings. We cannot hit the windings themselves because then we will um, we will destroy them and we don't want to do that. Okay, at least not to the primary winding. Maybe we don't care about the secondary windings and we will throw them away, but the primary winding uh, you will want to keep intact because it's, it's perfect. Uh, uh, she is perfect because you know, winding is feminine. Um, she's perfect the way she is. So we will want to put her back in the core, okay? So in order not to hit the winding, the winding needs to be supported on some pieces of wood, like you see here, and we need to hit only the metal. Furthermore, um, we uh, you, you don't want to um, hit with the hammer directly the core, because there's a very, very high chance of uh, hitting the windings themselves. So you will need a piece, uh, another piece of metal uh, that you will put on the core and you will hit that, um, you will hit that piece of metal instead. Okay, let me get back to this. Okay, so as you can see, I have here in my left hand a, a smaller piece of metal, a very solid a monolithical piece of metal and I'm hitting with my hammer on that piece of metal so that uh, the hammer force gets um, applied to the um, transformer core through this piece of metal. This way I can control where that force goes and I can make sure that I do not hit the windings at all. Okay. Um... And yeah, you're going to have to be patient about this. Some uh, transformer windings are very, very well glued and very tightly placed in that, uh, in, in that spot, uh, in that place, in, in the winding, in, in, the, in the core of the transformer. And some other transformers have their winding, uh, windings a lot loosely inserted there so they will be removed a lot easier it all depends okay so you will just have to 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 um, be 
um, to have enough patience okay now once you will remove the first winding of course you can hit uh, with your hammer directly the core himself um, until you get to the next windings uh, and then you will have to use this extra piece of metal so once you have uh, managed to you know completely remove the windings and by the way in this process the uh, the S-shaped core will break into smaller pieces like you see in this um, in this recording. Uh, it's not a problem, it's absolutely normal, um, it, we don't care about that at all, okay? It's not a problem at all. So, after we have managed to remove um, the windings, we will basically have the A-shaped core on the one side, the E-shaped core on the other side, and that looks like a lid. And we will also have the windings themselves. Now, whether or not you will do something with the secondary windings, which are made... Um, one uh, secondary winding, the one, with, uh, the one that was outputting high voltage, is made with a very thin uh, copper wire, or, well, it's not full copper, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Very thin wire, and it's relatively bigger, a, li a little bit bigger winding than the primary. Uh, so you will be able to um, identify her easily. On top of that, the secondary winding that has um, just a few turns of much thicker uh, wire that generates a small voltage but high current for the um, filament of the uh, microwave uh, vacuum tube is typically made with um, an insulated uh, wire like the one in red that you see here in this image so this is how easy you can uh, uh, identify you know the the, um, uh, the secondary windings what you do with them it's up to you um honestly I, I i have kept them and i will try to unwind this wire at some later point in the future it's not going to be very easy because um these windings, all of these windings have um, some so f some form of adhesive, um, some form of glue that was poured onto them, which makes perfect sense. But you know, we will. I don't know. I, I think I will probably need to heat with uh, um, a hot air blower uh, this entire winding in order to um, uh, attempt to liquefy that glue and uh, allow me to you know unwind the the wire i don't know uh, i will deal with that in the future i don't care right now I, I really don't care about the secondary windings however we do care about the primary winding um you will identify this primary winding be, uh, from uh, the simple fact that um um you have these uh, types of electrical connectors i don't know how to call them in english um they are you know very specific type of connectors used uh, in also in electric uh, installations um and the winding herself will be made from a thicker um wire okay because uh, the secondary winding is made with thinner wire because we have very small current however uh, the primary winding needs to absorb um, a higher current from the wall power so um needs thicker uh, thicker um wire of course so this is how you identify the primary winding now we will want to put the primary winding back into the a-shaped course okay so we will not throw that away we don't want to create our own primary winding because it doesn't make sense uh the, this primary winding is already calculated and created perfectly to match the voltage on the input that we have on um, that comes from the from the grid from the power grid uh, and it's also um, 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 the, the wire has also been um, dimensioned uh, well enough for that particular current that the transformer will want to pull from the wall okay so we don't want to create a new primary winding ourselves uh, and also this winding is very compact takes the minimum amount of physical space 
So yeah, we, we only have advantages from using this primary winding, okay? Ideally, um, you should not have this winding like this, uh, this because this was my first transformer. I managed to remove the paper that was, um, it's a very hard paper that covers the longer sides of this primary winding and that is um, a good electrical insulator. Ideally, you want to keep that paper, okay? Um, so, when you have removed this, ideally the paper should be there. If you don't have that paper then, or if the paper is partially damaged, then you will need to remove that paper completely and uh, put some new, um, uh, put some new um, insulator there. Uh, and I will show you in a moment. Okay, so um, one other thing that you need to do, because we don't know and we cannot assume, is uh, to um, count the number of turns that the primary winding has. Okay, and this is easier to do before we reintroduce the primary winding into the core. So, if you take a look on uh, from a top-down uh, view of the primary, you will be able to just measure, um, to, to just count, you know, how many wires do you have um, on top. And then if you turn on the side, the winding, the primary winding, you will also see that, you know, all the... Um, all the turns are parallel to each other, of course, they are very neatly uh, stacked, so you will be able to um, just count how many of those are on the side. And the total number of turns is essentially, or we can assume, uh, that is uh, uh, the product of these two numbers, right? Because we have, it's basically like a matrix. We have, uh, let's say, rows here and columns here, okay, or vice versa, depending on how you wish to look. So, the total number of turns is the product of these two numbers. For me, this was uh, 255. You know, I had 15 uh, turns on one side multiplied by 17 turns on the other side, so... I had 250 turns, give or take maybe a few turns um, error. Um, 250 turns of wire on the primary side. This is important because the voltage uh, that we will want on the output will need to be created by turning uh, so many turns in the secondary windings uh, according to the number of turns per volt. Okay, so in my case, I have 255 turns for um, an input voltage of anywhere between 220 and 240 volts. I'm going to calculate uh, for the, the voltage that I have in my house, which is 220. Okay, so uh, divided by 220, and this gives me about 1.16 turns per volt. And we need to basically um, write this number down somewhere. Because then, uh, like I said, when we will wind the secondaries, we will need to know how many turns do we, uh, sh should we place. Or at least how many minimum turns. So, let's say that we want 24 volts on the output, okay? Well, we will need to multiply 24 volts with this number of turns per volt, 1.16. So if I do that, then I get about 28 turns. Of course, we will always round up. So, um, because we cannot have fractionary number of turns, right? So we need to put on the secondary, um, if we want a single 24 volt um, output, we need to turn 28 times the, the, the copper wire to form uh, the secondary winding. And, of course, in practice, I would recommend that you give more turns, not a lot more, but a little bit more in order to compensate for the voltage drop uh, that happens when you draw more current, etc., etc. But at least we know, theoretically, you know, what's the absolute minimum number of turns that is needed for the voltage that we, um, for the voltage that we want to have. 
okay and this is easier to do right now before we actually insert the primary winding back into the core okay um okay let me check the list and see um what's next um okay um now like i said ideally we should we should still have the paper uh, the the very hard uh, cardboard paper that um, covers the primary winding if we don't then we need to um, re uh, we need to add some um, uh, insulating uh, tape and for that i highly recommend kapton tape it's written with k or kappa um you can i'm sure that you can easily find that uh, uh, on your local market um we have this even here um you, you can do a search on the internet and uh, you know find an online shop that sells this and place an online order this capton tape has um well, first of all she comes in different widths um so of course uh, for uh, this particular uh, project we we could benefit from a, um, a wider width um i i didn't have i had a more narrow uh, width but it doesn't matter uh, the captain tape has several advantages uh, one uh, of course it's a, an electrical insulator which we want we don't want an electrical conductor um second um she has a decent not a very good but a decent mechanical um resistance okay meaning it's not super easy to just remove the tape uh to just scratch a little bit the tape and the tape uh, getting removed um it's it's not hard but you know she she can withstand a bit of mechanical friction the second um, advantage is that she is pretty thin so the 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 the, the um, um, thickness of the tape herself is pretty small and we want that because um, we don't have a lot of space <laughs> you know everything's very tight with these transformers so uh, we don't have a lot of space so uh, we need to add um, one layer at least one layer of captain tape but honestly on, on the primary windings we won't have the luxury of uh, adding multiple uh, layers because again uh, the physical space is very very uh, small so we just add one layer of captain tape around the longer sides of the primary windings we don't care the um, smaller sides because those fall outside of the transformer so they don't uh, get into physical contact with the uh, uh, laminated core um the the longer lengths you know need to be covered in this insulator before we uh, proceed further so um once we have done this we also need to compress a little bit this um this primary winding because um we will see that it's gonna be pretty much impossible to just slide the primary back into the place into into the core of the into the a core of the transformer okay so um for that let me show you the next video we need to take um a couple of metal uh sheet i i took a galvanized uh, metal sheet it doesn't matter we we need to take um so a couple of metal sheets um and for each of the longer lengths of the primary, we need to use some sort of um, a plumber key to to compress a little bit, you know, the the winding so that they can uh, occupy a little bit more space. Otherwise, it will be impossible to to put it back. So um, don't uh, we, we need these uh, these two metal sheets because we don't want to press. To, to exert a force uh, directly on the wire herself um, because there's a very high chance that we will uh, essentially um, remove the insulation and create short circuit 
okay however if we use these uh, metal sheets um, the the force will tend to be a little bit better distributed and even if our um, our plier um, or our plumber key i don't know how you call this uh, particular tool even if you, you uh, if this tool slides a little bit left and right uh, the tool will not scratch the wire will only scratch these metal sheets okay um, you need to squeeze as hard as you can you won't be able to see any um, any change in the thickness of the winding but uh, trust me, uh, at least a sub-millimeter um, compression will be achieved and will be enough to allow you to put back the winding in the A-shaped core. Okay. Um, and then, once you have done this and you have done this enough, you need to reintroduce um, the winding into the A-shaped core. Now... Um, so, normally you would have this A-shaped core in multiple smaller pieces and you will actually insert one piece at a time um, into the uh, winding until you have all these pieces inside of the winding, okay? Um, for me, for this transformer, I was already at the second or third um, modifications that I was doing so I uh, I removed the primary winding and then put that back and then removed and put that back and at this point in time what I'm showing you is the A-shaped core all the all the um, all the sheets that formed the A-shaped core previously were already uh, set in place aligned and um, welded together okay so this is why um, there's a bit of discrepancy between what I'm showing you here and what I'm explaining. However, my explanations are still, you know, good. So you should follow what I'm explaining. Um, because I had this already welded, um, I was able to uh, right now add some extra, an extra layer of Kapton tape on the inside of the a-shaped core of course we don't care about the outside because the outside does not come into contact with anything um but inside of the a-shaped core we I, I felt the need to add an extra layer of kapton tape for insulation as well as on the bottom as you see here now you know, on the image once i have done this you know i was able to slide um the primary carefully and um yeah the primary um, managed to fall inside uh, do this carefully don't force anything if if the primary just doesn't want to to get inside perhaps rotate the core you know try a little bit left a little bit right um, if you you still fail then go back to the previous step and uh, try to compress the primary winding a little bit more until you finally get it but do not force anything under any circumstances because the captain tape will eventually break due to the friction uh, once the captain tape breaks you will scratch the wires of the winding and then the wires will uh, make electrical contact with the core and then yeah you'll, you'll have problems now once you have put uh, back the um, the winding completely take a continuity tester like um, any continuity tester it, it can be just a multimeter i have a dedicated continuity tester built um and i've shown that um, earlier on uh, my channel but anyway you can just take uh, uh, your regular multimeter uh, set it to continuity testing and test um one uh, test one, uh, uh, place one wire of the continuity tester on one of the wires of the winding and the other wire just slide it on, um, on uh, the uh, metal 
um, co um, metal core of the transformer okay ideally you should never ever ever have continuity if you do have continuity there's something wrong and the uh, winding um, gets into electrical contact with the um, the core and that's not good you're gonna have to remove the winding and see where the problem is see you know how you can fix that problem with some insulation etc 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 um, another thing that i forgot to mention but i will mention now um, before you insert the primary winding back you will want to perform a continuity test on the winding herself i haven't seen these transformers break so easily but you know, you don't want to put the primary back and perhaps go on completely with your transformer just to find in the end that you actually have a burned uh, um, primary winding and basically you've done all the work for nothing, okay? So take a continuity tester before anything and test the continuity of your wire or in the primary. It's still not enough, but we will, we will get in a moment to... Um, to another test that you can do better okay okay boom uh, so um we you, you have managed to do all of this and to put back the primary uh it's good it's uh, he doesn't make contact with the core you will uh, notice um, one in the previous steps when you um when you disassembled this transformer you have noticed that there are two uh isolated pieces of um some metal sheets that uh, are somewhere in between in the middle between the primary winding and the secondary windings of the original transformer okay um, those are useful to be put back in the transformer i'm not sure exactly why they felt the need to put those um I don't know, maybe to improve the magnetic flux path or I don't know um, improve performances, it doesn't matter. I have chosen to put those uh, metallic pieces back, okay? Or perhaps to, to allow more physical space between the primary and the secondary, I don't know. Anyway, um, you're gonna have to put those back. I don't think it's mandatory, but uh, it's definitely recommended, okay? Good, so now that we have the primary back and it's, uh, it, it's all good, um, we need to, uh, ideally, we need to perform another check um, because the check with the um, uh, continuity tester is not 100% enough, okay, to tell us that uh, the primary winding is good because if we have continuity, well, we can still have, um, potentially have um, um, a short circuit, actually, in our primary winding. And we, if we have a short circuit, uh, you know, continuity tester will show us that we have continuity. We will think that the primary winding is good, but in reality, she will not be good. So once we have put back the primary winding in the A-shaped core, if we have an LCR meter or an LCR bridge or whatever device that is able to measure inductance, then we can perform a measurement of the inductance and the inductance will be a good indication of whether or not the primary winding is healthy or if she is um, short-circuited somewhere okay sure um, I, I'm I, I realize that some of you don't have um, an LCR meter if you don't have an LCR meter okay you can just skip this step and um, you know assume the risk of not having um, a uh, healthy primary winding however if you do have uh, an lcr meter do perform this test from what i've seen the primary winding needs to have a few tens of milli henry's in my case uh, for this transformer i had 70 milli henry's uh, with the winding inserted just in the A-shaped core and then the inductance typically doubled when I took the E cores and I placed them over the A-shaped cores, which you will get to see uh, right here, okay? So I have taken the E-shaped cores, which basically form a plug, and I have put them on top of the A-shaped cores and the inductance has 
pretty much doubled from 70 to 140 milli henries, which is absolutely normal. It's absolutely um, uh, a normal phenomenon that happens, okay? I also tested this with another microwave transformer. Um, I'm going to skip forward a little bit and I will show you. So with another transformer, we have about 60-ish milli henries um, with S-shaped core. And then when I added the E uh, pieces on top, uh, again, the inductance doubled to 120. So this is a good indication that the windings, the, the primary windings are healthy. They are good. If we would have a short circuit, then the inductance would be small, very small, or even zero. And that would be a clear indication that the winding is not good, so we need to stop doing anything because we will not get uh, good results in the end. Okay? Um, and that's uh, pretty much it when it comes to what we need to do on the primary. Then we, we basically need to start uh, adding the secondaries. Not much to say about uh, the secondaries. You know, you calculate uh, the number of turns with um, um, the number of turns per volt number that you calculated before, that you measured and calculated before, um, and based on what voltages you need to have. Depending on what currents you want to have, you, you need to use a thicker wire or a thinner wire i will have a separate video for the thickness of the wires because that's an entire different uh, topic um and uh, the the thickness of the wires really um uh, is kind of universal like it, it doesn't matter if we're building a toroidal transformer if we're modifying microwave oven transformer if we're creating um i, I don't know just a coil or anything uh, when we want to work with a certain current that current will impose a certain thickness of the wire um and there's, there's just nothing we can do about it okay so um one thing i definitely uh, would like to share with you uh, because it may not be so obvious um, I would recommend that you do not work with wires thicker than two millimeter diameter okay why um, it, it's kind of a um, two millimeter I, I would say it's kind of a um, an more or less arbitrarily chosen number I have uh, been stubborn enough to use for this project a uh, two point six millimeter diameter wire uh, of copper and it was a pain in the ass to wind the secondary because the thicker the wire is the harder he is physically so um the harder it will be for you to bend the wire and turn all the um, turns of the winding and you know make sure that um each turn is uh, as close as possible to the previous turn and everything's packed together nicely you're pretty much not going to be able to do that if you choose very thick wires uh, i would say two millimeter diameter is the absolute maximum which um, with which you can work easily okay uh, anything more than that is going to be a pain in the ass. Uh, if you if you calculate that you need, and again, I'm going to make a make a separate video uh, on this topic. But if you calculate, if you if you see that you for a relatively high current you need a thick wire, um, choose instead to create two or multiple windings with a thinner wire and place those windings in parallel. Uh, this way you can mitigate, you know, having to use a very thick wire. Otherwise, you're going to struggle a lot. In the end, you won't be able to add so many turns that you would like. Um, even if you calculate mathematically that you have enough space. Um, let me let me draw so you can understand. So um, even if you calculate mathematically that within this space, you know, there is enough uh, physical space to put all the number of turns 
um, in the end you won't be able to add all of them because it will be unavoidable like you see here it will be unavoidable to have um, gaps to have sp free spaces between the turns be it will be completely impossible for you to you know bend these uh, thick wires and keep them um, ideally glued one to each other and yeah in the end you're gonna be disappointed um, so I do I do recommend that you um, <clears throat> you use a maximum of two millimeter uh, diameter wire. Now, um, one other um, tip that I can definitely give you is that, um, the, uh, so first of all, before you start winding the secondary winding, make sure that the both the inner and the outer, um, well, all four surfaces, of this um, uh, A core are um, electrically insulated, okay? And for that, you will need to add um, some Kapton tape. Even if you didn't add it Kapton tape uh, for the primary on the core, you will need to add some in this part for the um, um, for the secondary, okay? So we have here one surface okay on 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 this side we have here um another surface uh the rest is not visible uh on on uh, this side of the inner piece okay we have here yet another surface okay and again we have here um yet another surface on this outer um, side so we have four surfaces in total that you will want to have some form of electrical insulation from the wire even though the wire is electrically insulated because the wire is made of copper with enamel enamel is uh, a sort of um, i don't know some some sort of resin or something that um uh, you know, it's an electrical insulator. You will not want, you you'll still not want to have wire touch the metal because it's very easy to be scratched and to remove that enamel and to have electrical connection between your wire and the core. And again, you don't want to do that. You don't want to have that even in the secondary winding. Okay, so this is the reason why. Um, let me quickly come back to this video this is why you uh have seen just a second uh ah, no this is um uh this is okay uh this is the video so this is why you have seen right that i have placed captain tape from top to bottom uh on all of these four uh, layers for or four sides that I have shown you okay this captain tape is the one with the yellow so you, you can clearly distinguish uh, the based on the color okay um, yeah so uh, it's absolutely mandatory f at least for the secondary because you know if the primary maybe you, you still have the primary isolated with the initial paper or with your own captain tape um, the secondary winding, because you will wind directly on the metal. Um, well, you don't want to wind directly on the metal, okay? So, it, because you, we will wind that directly on the A core, um, there needs to be at least one layer of insulation, if not more, if the space allows you to have more, okay? Uh, and another tip that I can give you, uh, let me clear the image so I can draw something again. It's not very visible here because, um, again, th this was an image um, that I took from a previous um, step, from, from a previous iteration. Um, you, you see that I don't have Captain Tape here um, because uh, this was from a previous attempt that I deemed failed and then I removed everything and started all over again. So just ignore that. Um, what I also recommend to you before you start winding the secondary is to take a couple of pieces of plastic, preferably thicker pieces, like a few millimeters each, okay? 
and cut them to size and add them here at the very end of this inner core okay so let's see i'm i'm, I'm trying to draw this 3d uh, like here okay so add a couple of pieces of plastic here i don't know glue them with something or attach them with some um, um, insulating tape the idea is that these corners, these four corners of the inner core are very sharp and there's a super high chance that you will scratch at least the first layer of wire as you will turn the wire here. Um, you will scratch that and even if you have kept on insulating tape that will be damaged and um, yeah. <laughs> you, you you don't want that so instead of turning the wire around the uh, this metal corner you want to have an extra piece of plastic so that you turn the wire around the plastic okay so uh, suddenly the corners are made of plastic around which the wire gets turned and this way um, they will not scratch against the metal surface and they will their enamel layer will not be damaged okay uh, that's definitely a tip that I can give you because I was forced in the end after several tries uh, in, in, in which I, I, I tried to just use insulating tape and failed I had to add these plastic pieces at the end at both ends um in order to mitigate this problem okay and once you have um, um once you have uh, achieved this then you are pretty much done you only need to add uh, some insulating tape on the top of your windings so here and here um let me go back to uh, this image okay so let's say that this is your secondary winding that uh, you have created and of course you will not have uh, this uh, piece of paper right because you you wound the wire yourself then uh, you know come here and uh, place one or multiple layers uh, of insulating tape you know just cover or this entire uh, thing uh, if you can if the space allows you to you can even insert some um, some um, hard material uh, hard insulating material like an entire piece of plastic here okay to make sure that it's really insulating uh, because then you will have to come with this uh, this piece and put her back on top and then close the transformer okay and uh, once you do that uh, you need to go back to your uh, welding workbench and weld these two pieces together i have not um i have not filmed um, that portion because uh, you know it doesn't make sense you just need to weld the, those two pieces together and that's it and you have your microwave oven transformer changed the way you needed him to be changed. Uh, so now you can enjoy, now you can perform tests. Um, what I'm showing you now on the screen are basically um, some tests that I have run. After I have finished him, uh, you can see some fans i will explain in a moment some fans that i put on top of the transformer um what you see here now is um, um what i've shown you about two videos ago uh, an artificial load made from um, bread toaster uh, you know electrical elements um, resistive uh, elements because they can absorb a relatively high amount of energy um, they weren't enough, so I used some um, another piece of resistive wire to, you know, draw some even more current. Anyhow, um, so what you can see here, let me try to go back and find um, a good, better angle. Okay, so um, in the end, I had managed to have 20 
volts AC on my output and about 30 something more than 30 amps okay so uh, this uh, 370 millivolts voltage was measured across uh, about an 11 milli ohm shunt resistor so for every amp i have about 11 millivolts so 370 is 30 something amps okay so i was drawing more than 30 amps uh, at 20 volts from my transformer to test him um, sadly one thing that I managed to um, to realize is that we will not be able to measure this trans to to use this transformer at his full calculated power at his full mathematically calculated power remember that uh, the first in the first stages I told you to measure the inner core dimension uh, inner core surface in square centimeters because that will give you the electrical power sadly um, uh, microwave oven transformers are created to deliver a relatively high amount of energy a high amount of power um, but for short periods of time and uh, sometimes they will also work in bursts so they are turned on and then turned off by the um, uh, by the control circuitry of your microwave oven and then turned on again for a time and then turned off and so on and so forth so for that they don't need to be very big unfortunately this does this does tell us and this does mean that uh, we will not be able to use them at, at full power continuously because they will overheat okay uh, as you can see, I have turned on both fans. These are just standard computer fans. And the temperature of the primary winding, which I, I was measuring with that um, with this um, thermometer, uh, let me go back, okay, was almost 50 degrees Celsius and was still climbing. Um, if I did not had that uh, th those two fans blowing air and trying to cool forcibly the transformer, the transformer even got up to 100 degrees Celsius, which is way too much, and would have gotten even uh, to higher temperatures. So this is a bit of a problem with this. They are still very useful. They are still not to be thrown away. They are still not to be taken to the scrap. Just so you know you probably won't be able to use them above i don't know 500 watts give or take um like you're gonna have to do some measurements yourself and to also measure the temperature at which they uh, they uh, raise themselves so you're gonna have to do a bit of research for yourself needless to say they will not be able to go up to their full calculated mathematically power okay um so that's that uh, another thing that i need to mention but i will talk about in more details in the next video which will come soon in just a few days um is the fact that by default these transformers are extremely inefficient so we will have to perform what is called the um, uh, power factor correction okay so um I'm trying to show you. Okay, so if you take a look at the left of my blue multimeter, there's another blue box. It, it, it this appears to be a blue box, but it's not. Um, he's a he's a capacitor actually, a high voltage 40 microfarad capacitor that I placed electrically in parallel with the primary winding of the transformer. Um, the power factor is uh, horrendous if we do not perform the correction with a transfer with a capacitor. Okay, the power factor is something like 0 0.1, 0 0.15, um, which is just plain garbage. Um, our, um, um, I, and I will show you this in the next video. Um, our transformer will pull a very high amount of current even without being connected to any load um, and that current will be wasted will be just wasted this is the nature of you know the transformers 
winding. So in order to perform this, you will need to to bother with um, you know calculating and placing a capacitor in parallel. If you do that, then um, the, you you will obtain a pretty good um, efficiency. Let me see if I um, manage to film. Yes. So as you can see. Right, with a capacitor, we have a pretty good efficiency. We have 70 uh, 730 watts of power drawn from the mains. I will do some calculations on the side and I will tell you in a moment. So we have 730 watts divided by the apparent power, which is the voltage multiplied by current. Okay, so in this case, I have 210 volts multiplied by 3.61 amps. So we get an efficiency of, uh, or a power factor in this case of 96%, which is good. It's very good, but again, with a capacitor. Without a capacitor, this will be 50 or 60% at best. So uh, almost uh, as much energy as we would deliver to the output, we would also waste. And yeah, I'm pretty sure the transformer will would blow <laughs> in this case because the current would be way too high for him. Um, yeah. So that's pretty much about it. This is pretty much what um, what entails the modification of a microwave oven transformer. But nevertheless, um, it's uh, it's definitely a worthy endeavor. Uh, in the end, we will have a device that's worth a lot more than just the uh, the value of the copper uh, and the aluminium and the iron and you know the value of the raw materials that he's made of. Um, yeah, so <laughs> uh, this this is definitely the proper way to reuse a microwave oven transformer. Okay. Um, we can use him for, you know, um, medium power, power supplies, ac accumulator chargers, um, of course, the ones that we create ourselves, um, inverters, okay, so if we want to create an inverter and power something from accumulators, we will create the electronics, but of course, we will... Um, we will tend to need um, a transformer of some kind, so we can use this transformer as an inverter. Um, because after all, uh, we get to decide what is the primary, what is the secondary. It doesn't have to be just a step-down transformer. He can be a step-up transformer. Um, yeah, mm, we could potentially create a welding device uh, with such a transformer. You know, like um, there are quite a few use cases. And if we have gotten such a transformer for free, by just recovering him from a, a, you know an, um, a microwave oven that perhaps one of our neighbors threw to the garbage um, then of course we will obtain a high value thing in the end for pretty much nothing for for very cheap <clears throat> so that's pretty much it uh i hope you have enjoyed and i hope now um this video has proven useful to you Thank you very much for watching. Uh, keep in touch. I will continue to upload uh, useful things. Uh, regardless of whether you will create your own electronics or you will buy other electronics. Um, uh, the next video is going to be useful because it's going to be about this power factor correction that I mentioned here in this uh, uh, last few minutes. So stick around. Thank you very much for to the supporters of this project on Patreon. There's a link in the description if anyone wants to support me financially to continue this work and come here and explain to you in uh, detailed um, everything that um, you know we need to do about creating the things that we need to create. You can do so uh, on my Patreon page, link in the description. Otherwise. Um, a like and a subscribe to my channel is free and definitely helps the channel, helps the YouTube algorithm um, uh, potentially uh, recommend my videos to other people who may be interested. So, thank you very much for watching. I will see you soon in my next video. Bye-bye.